exist here. Uh, also, the fact that uh, the video pertains to Group 1 examination that took place on the 16th of October in various parts of the state. Now, we spoke to the local police who say that no discrimination was done. And as for the rules and procedure, they checked each and every student. And every student was allowed to enter only with a water bottle and an ID card. When the question was being raised about uh, Hindu women and especially married women being asked to remove their Mangal Sutra and other ornaments, the Adilabad police has categorically denied this allegation. This has also come as a strong voice of protest from the TRS side as well. They said that rules were followed as per the directions given uh, by the state as well as the central government. The other side of the story is, of course, Anusha, the fact that... Uh, Several of these women, in fact, none of them have officially lodged a complaint. Mm. So this entire video was launched by uh, the BJP with an allegation that uh, discrimination was done. Mm. Also, while responding to another question that I raised on why women with uh, burqa were allowed, the Adilabad police said there is no such rule that burqa clad women will not be allowed. However, they were asked to remove their face uh, covering and thorough checking was also done inside uh, the campus before being allowed to take examination. Thank you, Swastika, for getting us all the details on that entire story. We continue tracking this much more here on CNN News 18. Rhythma joins you with the nation at 5. Thank you for watching this. What happened that's in Jibu did happen. Right, the game. High Court that's in right. uh, Kolkata has, of course, lambasted your government and the police Please. over the post war violence. We are not making this up. Even in Valmiki Ramayana, it is written that Ravan was Sarva Guna Sampan. Hmm. Despite all the knowledge, all the ability that he had, he had no control over his Indriyas. And that's what the Indriyas finally consumed him. Correct. He and wanted something, yeah. he wanted it. Correct. He didn't think about, Yaar, ye dharm hai ke adharm. You can't annex Ukrainian sovereign territory in a referendum and then bomb missiles across 12 cities, kill about a dozen civilians, and then say, come and talk to us. Here is someone who is on a mission. Here is someone who has vision. And his scope and idea in terms of uh, the small towns of India's to be uh, is very different from what we have seen by leaders in the past. Watching the nation at 5 here on CNN News 18, I'm Ridhima Bhatnagar. It's a big day for the Congress party as they've gotten a non-Gandhi chief after a gap of 24 years. Malik Arjun Kharge swept the presidential polls and defeated Shashi Tharoor by over 6,800 votes. Malik Arjun Kharge got 7,897 while Shashi Tharoor got 1,072 votes. Earlier today, the Tharoor camp wrote a letter to the Congress Election Authority citing irregularities in the polls in Uttar Pradesh, but later conceded defeat to Kharge in a tweet. Kharge will now replace the longest-serving Congress President Sonia Gandhi, who was the president since 1998, barring two years when Rahul Gandhi took charge in 2017 and 2019. He will be handed over the charge by Sonia Gandhi after the Gujarat elections at the AICC plenary. कांग्रेस पार्टी के कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के आर्टिकल 18 15 18 के डी के मुताबिक मैं मधुसूदन मिस्त्री श्री मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे नेशनल इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस के प्रेसिडेंट की प्रेसिडेंट को चुनाव चुनाव की मैं जाहिरात करता हूं मैं डिक्लेअर करता हूं प्रेसिडेंट is the supreme authority in the Congress party. And every Congress member reports to that person. I am very clear as far as my role is considered concerned. 
the president will decide what my role is and how i am to be deployed that that you have to ask kharge ji and sonia gandhi ji but as far as the congress party is concerned the final authority in the congress party is the congress president and we will have a new congress president and that gentleman will decide exactly how the congress party moves forward जैसा आप सब जानते हैं आदरणीय मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे साहब भारी बहुमत से चुनाव जीते हैं लोकतंत्र में इससे बेहतर उदाहरण नहीं हो सकता जब आंतरिक डेमोक्रेसी को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए कांग्रेस पार्टी ने बड़ा व्यापक चुनाव कराया मतदान हुआ सत्रह तारीख को और आज लगभग नब्बे परसेंट वोट खड़गे साहब को मिला ये लोकतंत्र की जीत है ये देशवासियों के लिए और कांग्रेस पार्टी की जीत है मैंने खड़गे साहब को भी मुबारकबाद दिया है शुभकामनाएं दी है एक बहुत बड़ी जिम्मेदारी और चुनौती उनके ऊपर आज आई है हम सब लोग तमाम कांग्रेस जन पूरे देश के एक जुटता के साथ और मैं मानता हूं चुनाव से कांग्रेस के अंदर और ताकत आई है कांग्रेस और एक जुट हुई है और सब लोग मिलकर इनके नेतृत्व में काम करेंगे मुझे पूरा भरोसा है खरगे साहब का जो व्यापक अनुभव है उसका लाभ पार्टी को मिलेगा आने वाली तमाम चुनौतियों का सामना हम करेंगे और कांग्रेस पार्टी और मजबूत होगी खड़गे साहब का बनना हम सब गौर की बात है अनुभव के धनी है नौ बार विधायक दो बार लोकसभा के मेंबर और भी नेता प्रतिपक्ष रहे हैं कारवा चल पड़ा है इधर माहौल देखो चुनाव का खड़गे जी के नेतृत्व में आप देखेंगे आने वाले वक्त में कांग्रेस मजबूत होगी सोनिया जी का राहुल जी को पूरा समर्थन के साथ रहेगा शुरुआत हुई है कई बातें होगी मिलकर काम करेंगे A moment was day for the Congress party. Uh, Kharge ji being elected as the president. Your first thoughts on it? Well, I think uh, Mr. Kharge is is the supreme, quintessential organization man. You know, risen from uh, from really the grassroots. He sub he completed 50 years in political life in March of this year. Minister at the state, minister at the centre, minister uh, member of the Lok Sabha, member of the Rajya Sabha. This is what the organisation needs. You know, the organisation. Uh, we have a lot of charismatic individuals in our party, but what we need uh, is less charisma and more uh, dedication and discipline and putting your nose to the ground, uh, understanding the organisation. Dr. Tharoor put up a good show. Uh, he ran a spirited campaign. uh the organization man has won and now i think the organization uh, has to work as a collective enterprise as a collective team you know you should be you should be magnanimous in victory and graceful in defeat the dr tharoor was not disgraced uh he got respect he did respectably well uh but i think you know uh, i don't think even dr tharoor uh, expected to win i mean you know i don't think actually expected to win uh, he was fighting to do a good show and he put up a good show Let me also now bring in my colleague and senior editor Pallavi Ghosh, who is joining us from outside the Congress office. We are also awaiting that official press conference by Malik Arjun Kharge, expected to begin any minute. What is the mood at the Congress office, Pallavi? Well, very upbeat, but now the Pallavi, I really apologize for interrupting. I believe that press conference has begun. In the news conference, I am very happy to be here. We are all members of the Congress office, because many friends, many senior members, senior workers. बड़े जोश और उमंग के साथ आज यहां आए हैं और इसीलिए ये पत्रकार वार्ता लगभग आधा घंटे लेट शुरू हुई उसके लिए आपको इंतजार करना पड़ा पर आप भी इस उमंग और जोश के अंदर आ, हमारे बीट के बहुत सारे साथी हैं आप जुड़ेंगे मुझे विश्वास है बगैर विलंब के मैं आदरणीय खड़गे साहब से अनुरोध करूंगा कि वो अपनी बात आपको कहेंगे आदरणीय खड़गे साहब शुरू में तो मैं आपसे क्षमा चाहता हूं और यहाँ की स्थिति क्या है आपने खुद आँखों से देखा है इसीलिए थोड़ी देर हो गई थोड़ी नहीं एक आधा घंटा देर हुआ इसीलिए मुझे वक्त पे आपके सामने हाजिर होने का समय नहीं आया तो इसलिए फिर एक बार मैं आपसे माफी मांग के अपने शब्दों को आगे बढ़ाऊंगा आजादी के पचहत्तर साल के इतिहास में भारतीय राष्ट्रीय कांग्रेस ने लगातार इस देश की डेमोक्रेसी को मजबूत किया 
और संविधान की रक्षा की आज जब डेमोक्रेसी खतरे में है संविधान पर हमला बोला जा रहा है और हर इंस्टीट्यूशन को तोड़ा जा रहा है तो कांग्रेस पार्टी ने राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल इलेक्शंस करवाकर देश की डेमोक्रेसी को मजबूत करने का एग्जाम्पल पेश किया है कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट के चुनाव के सफल आयोजन के लिए मैं पार्टी के सभी डेलीगेट्स सीनियर लीडर्स वर्कर्स और जो कोई भी इस कार्यक्रम से जुड़े हैं उन सब को मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं आप सब ने डेमोक्रेसिक प्रोसेस में हिस्सा लेकर कांग्रेस को मजबूत किया है मेरे साथी श्री शशि तरूर को भी शुभकामना देता हूं क्योंकि ये चुनाव में हम एक एक प्रतिनिधि के रूप में हम और वो खड़े थे लेकिन चुनाव बहुत अच्छा चला और वो भी मुझे आकर मिले एक दूसरे से हम मिलकर अपना जो आगे पार्टी को बढ़ाने का भी जो कुछ कोऑपरेशन मैंने भी पूछा और उन्होंने भी खसते हुए ये तो एक डेमोक्रेटिक प्रोसेस है हमको मिलके काम करना है ये कहा तो इसलिए मुझे बड़ी खुशी होती है उनको भी मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं सभी कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ताओं की ओर से मैं श्रीमती सोनिया गांधी का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं सोनिया जी ने पर्सनल सेक्रीफाइस कर तेवीस वर्ष तक कांग्रेस पार्टी के अपने खून पसीने से सींचा है सोनिया जी की लीडरशिप में न केवल हमने दो बार केंद्र में सरकार बनाई बल्कि अनेकों राज्यों में कांग्रेस को रिवाइव किया और राज्यों में भी सरकार उन्होंने बनाई उनका कार्यक्रम इतिहास में याद रखा जाएगा जो इतने लंबे समय तक पूरा कार्य करके पार्टी को एक शक्ति दी आज देश में सबसे बड़ी समस्या कमर तोड़ महंगाई यानी इन्फ्लेशन भयंकर बेरोजगारी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अमीर गरीब के बीच की खाई बढ़ते जा रही है और सरकार के द्वारा देश में देश में फैलाई जाने वाली नफरत देश की इन समस्याओं के खिलाफ जन आंदोलन तैयार करके करने के लिए पूर्व कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष श्री राहुल गांधी कन्याकुमारी से कश्मीर तक 3570 किलोमीटर की यात्रा पर निकले हैं आज पूरा देश उनके संघर्ष से जुड़ रहा है मैं कांग्रेस जनों और देश के लोगों से अपील करता हूं कि देश के हित में भारत जोड़ो यात्रा में शामिल होकर श्री राहुल गांधी जी के कंधे से कंधे मिलाकर चलेंगे उन्होंने मुझे एक घंटा पहले मुझसे उन्होंने कहा कि आपको अभिनंदन आप कांग्रेस के अध्यक्ष बने हैं और मैं कांग्रेस के सिपाही के नाते काम करते रहूंगा और आगे बढ़ेंगे सब मिलके ऐसा उन्होंने मुझसे कहा इसीलिए बड़ी मुझे बड़ी खुशी होती है कि वो पाद यात्रा में रहते हुए वो अपना थोड़ा सा समय मेरे लिए उन्होंने फोन पे बिताया इसलिए मैं उनका भी धन्यवाद करता आज हम सबको मिलकर कार्यकर्ता के तौर पर काम करना है यहां ना कोई बड़ा है ना छोटा सब बराबर है 
हमें देश के संविधान पर हो रहे हमले और देश की डेमोक्रेसी को खत्म करने की कॉन्स्परेशन मिलकर लड़ना है हमें फैसिस्ट ताकतों से लड़ना है जो कम्युनलिज्म का चोला ओढ़कर डेमोक्रेटिक इंस्टीट्यूशन पर अटैक कर रहे हैं हम संगठन को भी मजबूत करेंगे और इन चुनौतियों से भी लड़ेंगे दिल्ली की सत्ता पर बैठे हुए हुक्मरान सरकार बातें तो बहुत करते हैं पर काम कुछ नहीं होता और असलियत में उनके चरित्र को चार शब्दों में अगर मैं बताऊं कि ये है खोखला चना बाजे घना तो ये उनका काम है तो दोस्तों हमारा मानना है कि देश एक तानाशाही की सनक की भेंट नहीं चढ़ाया जा सकता हमें इकट्ठे होकर इन विनाशकारी ताकतों के ताकतों को हराना है पार्टी के सभी दोस्तों को संसद से सड़क तक लड़ना होगा बूथ स्तर पर संगठन के हर साथी को जोर से संघर्ष करना होगा मुझे विश्वास है कि जैसे आपने मुझ पर भरोसा जताया है और गरीब परिवार में जन्मे एक सामान्य व्यक्ति को एक सामान्य कार्यकर्ता को कांग्रेस का अध्यक्ष बनाया है मैं आपके भरोसे पर खरा उतरने की पूरी पूरी कोशिश करूंगा जय हिंद जय कांग्रेस थैंक यू सर दे विल बी दे विल बी अनदर दे विल बी अनदर अपॉर्चुनिटी खड़गे साहब हैज आई एम वेरी फॉर्चुनेट दैट आई कॉन आई एम इन चार्ज ऑफ द सेम स्टेट दैट खड़गे साहब कम्स फ्रॉम सो ही हैज आस्ट मी टू रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू उन्होंने मुझे आपसे सादर हाथ जोड़कर अनुरोध करने को कहा है कि 26 तारीख को वो अपना कार्यभार संभालेंगे और उस दिन एक व्यापक पत्रकार वार्ता कर बहुत सारे सवालों का जवाब लेंगे आज हम सब ने उन्हें अनुरोध किया कि आज आप अध्यक्ष निर्वाचित हुए हैं आप आज जरूर पत्रकार मित्रों को से मिलिए अपनी टिप्पणी करिए एक व्यापक पत्रकार वार्ता जिसमें आपके सब सवालों का जवाब वो लेंगे उन्होंने मुझे अनुरोध किया है आपसे अनुरोध करने को कि आप थोड़ा सा धैर्य रखें और 26 को आपके सब सवाल लेंगे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Well that was the new Congress party president Malikarjun Kharge there addressing the media he spoke about how it was a celebration of democracy it was a fair and free election also very importantly he thanked the gandhis he spoke about the sacrifices of sonia gandhi he also spoke about a brief phone call that he had with rahul gandhi who is continuing to undertake that bharat jodo yatra what does the new party president mean for the congress party let me take that question to our guests we have political analyst kapil madan we also have senior editor of swaraj magazine tushar gupta good to have both of you on the broadcast with us tushar how did you see the first comments of the new party president because all day long there was a lot of drama it was expected for malika arjun kharge to be declared as the party president he was seen as somebody close to the gandhis as a favorite as well but what did you make of first the kind of fingers that were pointed by shashi tharoor citing some sort of irregularities and by the afternoon conceding defeat in a very mature statement good evening rithima good evening kapil see for me it's old wine packaged in a new bottle to use an analogy what mr kharge statements were just the same old rhetoric that the constitution is under attack they have to pick up a fight from the parliament to the streets it's all the same it's all the usual rhetoric we've been listening from the congress for a very long time what i refuse to believe however rithima is that out of 9000 delegates that were voting in this election mm-hmm. 90% of them believe that an 80 year old man who's backed by the gandhis who's a favorite of the gandhis who may not enjoy that much support on the ground by virtue of his age or by virtue of what he has to offer to the party is the right man to lead the party at this juncture this is what i refuse to believe because look at the entire process the problem has always been that the three gandhis are unable to get the votes for the congress mm. and again you have someone who's backed by tension but against shashi tharoor who probably brings some energy to the party mm. and then you had tharoor statements early on that 
people who are being told to back Kharge. Now yeah. you had a morning, uh, you know, bomber that uh, probably the election process was rigged. Of course, it's a party conflict. It's part has to sort it out. Sure. But for me, this is nothing new. It's again like we had during the Manmohan Singh era. Oh, look, there is a non-Gandhi prime minister. This will change things. This is a new era. It's again the same old wine in a new bottle. Kapil, how do you respond to the criticism that's coming in from Tushar and also the opposition, the BJP also saying exactly this, that we knew Malik Arjun Kharge is going to emerge victorious because he is somebody who's backed by the Gandhis. And what they're pointing out is actually some very interesting facts. One, you had a whole host of leaders who had already backed Malik Arjun Kharge openly even before the counting or the casting of votes took place. Even today morning, while the official counting was still going on, you already had posters that were up all around the national capital congratulating Malik Arjun Kharge as the party president. So then, was it even a fair and free process? Now, let us let us see, Shreya, how the... Ridhima this uh, side, Kapil. Uh, I'm so sorry. So, you know, uh, let us let us see, you know, how the electoral process happens. Now, when the elections were announced, you had different people who there were news. And in fact, there were reports that they would be contesting. We sure. saw they were saying, uh, you know, was one of the contender. We also saw Ashok Gehloth as one of the contender. But finally, when the uh, nomination process was over, you had only two candidates. That is Malika Arjun Kharge ji and Shashi Tharoor ji. And of course, as a as a uh, uh, as a political party and if there is an election of course you will we have you have but to elect but even that's those. problematic no kapil even when the name of ashok gelot was doing the rounds why yeah, did he withdraw yeah. his candidature because th the revolt that we saw in yeah. rajasthan had apparently made the gandhis very unhappy so they decided to pull the plug as far as ashok gelot's candidacy is concerned so then the entire narrative is that this is still being controlled by the gandhis you can have a face you can have whoever but it's still being taken, the decisions Ridhima are still ji, being taken by the Gandhis. Uh, Ridhima ji, I would appreciate, please let me complete my uh, uh, statement and hmm. then you can respond. Hmm. Now, the point I was trying to make is that in an, any electoral, electoral uh, uh, contest, you have people competing and you can only vote for the people who have completed. Now, see, in the context of, you know, G23 discussion, you had uh, 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 Shashi Tharoor himself, who was a part of G G23 uh, group. You had Manish Tiwari. However, Manish Tiwari has also uh, supported the candidature of Kharge Ji. So all I'm trying to say is that in a Cause you have in contest you have people who will be supporting either of the candidate. Now here you have you have a situation where more than seven thousand people have supported Mr. Kharge. Hmm. So that shows that Mr. Kharge enjoys the popularity, enjoys the confidence, and enjoys the, the you know uh, confidence of the workers and the you know uh, political leaders. That's the reason why he has been elected. Please also remember when Mr. Kharge filed his nomination, there were more than thirty senior leaders that have. Hmm you know okay. and they have uh, supported his candidature now if you look at it in contrast to bjp how the elections have happened do you have an internal uh, democracy in bjp in the past 20 years if you see historically mr nadda was you know he's just uh, renewed his term there were no election there were no voice that there is any other competing any other individual who can compete with mr nadda the okay. same thing happened when uh, mr Amit Shah was uh, selected. Tushar, do you buy the, the narrative that's you, coming Mr. in Rajma from Singh the Congress elected. party or the likes of Kapil? We're also getting some live visuals coming in of Shashi Tharoor. He, I'm guessing he's also going to address the media uh, shortly. Let's actually cut to it and try and listen in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tharoor. बहुत शुक्रिया जी नमस्कार मित्रों मैं तो आया हूँ आपको पता है आज हमारे इससे लाउड तो नहीं होगा मुझसे सॉरी आप लोग और नजदीक आना चाहते हैं तो शायद बेहतर होगा हाँ इनके माइक तो पिकअप करेंगे लेकिन इससे ज्यादा चिलाना माफ करो क्योंकि वैसे भी 18 दिन से चिल्ला रहा हूँ तो मैं गला तो गया एक बार चिल्ला ये सब थोड़ा आज लगेगा कि एक आखिरी बार चिल्लाएंगे अच्छी बात है देखिए आपको पता है कि आज 
कांग्रेस पार्टी के करीब 900 से ज्यादा अंग हमारे डेलीगेट्स हमारे पीसीसी डेलीगेट्स नाइन थाउजेंड करीब नौ हजार नौ हजार माफ कीजिए आज निर्णय लिया कि मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे साहब हमारा नया अध्यक्ष होगा मैं खबर खबर सुन के उनके घर गए और उनको मेरी बधाई सुना दी वो बहुत मेरे वरिष्ठ नेता है मैं उनके साथ काम भी किया हूँ लोकसभा में जैसे मैं आप सबको पहले भी बताया था हम लोग कॉलीग्स हैं सहयोगी है और मैं खुश हूँ कि इस चुनाव के बाद कांग्रेस पार्टी को एक नया अध्यक्ष के लीडरशिप और के नेतृत्व और गाइडेंस से आगे बढ़ने का मौका मिलेगा मैं ये भी कहूंगा आप लोगों से कि मैं बहुत आभारी हूं कि इतने सारे कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ताओं ने मुझे समर्थन दिए जिनमें से 1000 से ज्यादा मतदान देने वाले हमारे डेलीगेट्स भी थे और बहुत सारे जो शायद वोट देने का हक नहीं था लेकिन कांग्रेस पार्टी की भलाई के लिए काम करने वाले मुझे हर प्रदेश में आके समर्थन दिए मेरे साथ निकले और हर जगह में जैसे आप आज भी देखते हैं मेरे साथ रुक के मुझे जिस किस्म के मॉरल सपोर्ट दिए मैं इसके लिए आभारी हूं मेरे ख्याल में हमारे कार्यकर्ता हैं हमारे पार्टी का असली गुरु और मैं कहूंगा कि हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं के काम से ही पार्टी आगे बढ़ेगी और मैं खुश हूं कि उनको इस इस विषय से सॉरी इस चुनाव से उनको भी एक मौका मिला हमारे पार्टी के भविष्य के बारे में सोचने के लिए और उनके ही पसीने से उनके ही काम से हमारे पार्टी का भविष्य बनने में एक बहुत भूमि बहुत बड़ा भूमिका लेना मैं चाहता हूं कि पार्टी उनकी भी आवाज सुने मैं चाहता हूं कि खड़गे साहब का विजय हम सब मान ले कि कांग्रेस पार्टी की जीत है मैंने शुरुआत से ही कहा था ये कोई व्यक्ति का विषय नहीं है मैं मेरे लिए कुछ नहीं चाहता मैं सिर्फ चाहता हूं कि पार्टी मजबूत बने क्योंकि भारतीय मजबूती के लिए एक कांग्रेस मजबूत होना बड़ी जरूरी है तो इसी स्पिरिट में और इसी उद्देश्य से मैं लड़ा और जो भी इस लड़ाई में भाग ले उनको मेरी बधाई और मेरे ऑल माई ग्रेटिट्यूड पे बताना चाहता हूं मैं उससे अभी रुकूंगा क्योंकि अगर आप लोग को प्रश्न होंगे तो शायद उसके लिए जवाब दे दूंगा लेकिन मेरे मन में ये बहुत अच्छा हुआ कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और यहां से हम आगे बढ़ के कांग्रेस को हमारे देश के आने वाले चुनावों में एक बहुत बड़ा असर पड़ेगा मेरे ख्याल में क्योंकि हमारे कार्यकर्ता भी जाग गए हैं सब लोग तैयार हैं बीजेपी के चुनौती को निपटने के लिए और मैं भी काफी कॉन्फिडेंट हूं कि हमारी पार्टी आप लोगों को हमारी कामयाबी दिखाई सकेंगे देश का गुरु शशि थरूर देश का कोहिन नूर शशि थरूर या Mr. Tharoor, you got uh, almost 1,072 votes. So uh, many are saying, the political observers are saying that uh, uh, you know these votes uh, reflect that there is a feeling of dissent within the Congress cadre because Mr. Tharoor was seen as a Gandhi family candidate, and you were not seen as a Gandhi family candidate. So many are saying that uh, Congress also, or uh, thousand people in the Congress among the Congress delegates, want change, and this is this is a vote for dissent. Like how the difference between the two, you know, I didn't pitch myself as the candidate of dissent. I pitched myself as a candidate of change, and change not in the ideology of the party or in the direction of the party, but rather in the manner in which we do our regular work. And I did feel that there was a need for opening up uh, access to karyakartas in the party, creating more opportunities for discussion forums, implementing not only the Declarations of the Udaipur Chintan Shibir, but further, some of the additional ideas that I had published in the manifesto, which came to me largely from our own party workers who wanted to see these changes, and therefore, for me, I would stress 
that it is not so much about dissent, but how we can make a good party better. I believe we have the experienced leaders, the strong record in governance, and the convictions and values that are right for the country. But what I felt there was a problem with was that there was a sense of disconnect on the part of many of our workers and that we needed to overcome that by giving them a greater sense of involvement. I hope the election itself has contributed to giving them some sense of involvement in the party. I believe that is the case. But I think beyond this, there's much more that needs to be done. And I hope Mr. Kharge, once he has had time to assume his role fully, will look seriously at how all party workers can contribute to effective governance in the party so that we can mount an effective challenge to the BJP in the elections ahead. Yeah. Sir, uh, Mr. Rur, uh, you know, while you were campaigning as well, there were times when you raised that, you know, sometimes... is to run a robust animal birth control program. Uh, if we just look at this incident that has happened in Noida very dispassionately and just to diagnose where and who went wrong, I'd say squarely it is the fault of the Noida authority. For the past three, four years, we've been telling uh, them that the program is riddled with corruption and uh, hardly any mm, sterilization is happening and a lot of relocation is happening. People want dogs out of their societies. They are picked up and uh, uh, thrown somewhere else in some other locality where where they fight for territory and aggression ag gets aggravated. Uh, this is a result of exactly that. It was a ticking time bomb, very unfortunate and avoidable situation. Only if we learn to mend our ways now and uh, run a proper, robust, scientific animal birth control program and not probably go back to the municipal corporation law era of the uh, of the British when Indians and dogs and whatever were not allowed in certain areas. And okay. that did not solve, us, solve the problem. I mean, during the um, municipal corporation laws when they were in force, did that solve the problem of dogs? No, it did not. Um, for centuries, it did not, which is why for developing countries that have an urban solid waste problem. Uh, there are scavenging animals and to get rid of them one has to apply science. You cannot have an eye for an eye and let's kill all the dogs right now or get let's remove them and put them in some shelters. It's not, it's not going to be scientific. Moreover, the rules provide that if a dog is aggressive, then in the animal birth control center it can be put under observation which, um, uh, you know, where, where it can either die of rabies or if it mends its ways. But, but it Gaurav Malaki, why then, why then is, a, is in a country like uh, ours, the estimate of the number of dogs that have been uh, sterilized is less than 10% out of a possible 60 million dogs across the country, uh, less than 6 million have been sterilized. Surely then yeah, you, would, you would agree that there is a problem of non-sterilized dogs and particularly in urban centers like Delhi NCR or you saw what happened in Kerala a few months ago. If you have a large number of non-sterilized dogs out there, uh, surely it's an invitation to kill. Zero resources by the center towards the animal birth control program. Municipal corporation not even understanding their duty, let alone trying to implement it properly and state governments not monitoring the animal birth control program as has been directed by the Honorable Supreme Court. These are the gaps. Okay. If only uh, I've got a bunch of callers. Resources. I want to go to them first uh, and then I'll go across back to the rest of our guests. Uh, Mr. Kulamani Mishra is calling us from Bhubaneswar. Uh, Mr. Mishra, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Go ahead with your question, yes. Hello. Yes, go ahead with your question. I can hear uh, you. Actually, actually, this dog menace is very distressing. And uh, in our colony also, it is a colony of 210 families. Uh -huh. The pet dog kept by the owners or tenants is also highly distressing and disturbing. When we are going inside the lift, one dog is coming from top floor. And it, it, it uh, harms the uh, new entrant in, inside the lift. So this has to be stopped. There new rules to be framed wherein okay. a dog Dog time should be uh, fixed, but from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., dogs can be allowed in the, inside the list. Other times, dogs should not be allowed inside the list. All right, the let me also go to across to our dog. next caller. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mishra. Vimla is calling us from Pune. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, just about the stray dogs. It has become a nuisance. 
actually in each and every corner of the road many minimum seven dogs will be waiting there and when we go small children behind our children it, they are running and they are just uh, getting injured so okay. i don't know what will be the solution for this it should be stopped you know because, all right uh, thank you for your call harish is calling us from chennai harish good evening what what is your question sir i don't have a question i have a solution for your uh, problem mm -hmm. see i am 60 years old from the for, for the past 38 years i'm training dogs and i'm with dogs and i had very rough dogs the problem i seen in all these years the all these things all these dog attacks start start uh, started after you people started castrating the dogs that is one of the worst things you should do they get frustrated don't stop that first second thing what i advise you people what about the government or who are the authority is let the, let the dogs be allowed to mingle in in the public and let the children be trained on dogs and all the just a finger and your attitude can stop any dog from attacking anybody all right Even harish thanks very much for that uh, um dinkar pandey is vice president of nifova shahzada sodi is also joining us dinkar pandey uh, you know it comes back to the animal welfare board of india which has come up with rules which suggest that the victims in this case are really dogs in fact an awi circular says that a person getting in the way of a dog can be perceived as an example of provocation and citing these rules often times what happens is stray dog free, uh, feeders frequently threaten residents and therefore rwas do not want to come in the way because they are often threatened with an fir for criminal intimidation is it time that these yeah. rules are changed dinkar pandey yeah right and and i i'll talk about uh, more comprehensive way because everyone is talking about problem right nobody is talking about impact i'll cite some examples mm -hmm. there were some dogs in nearby society i'll name it in fusion uh, some time ago and by the time authority catches it it took toll of at least eight residents recently one lady was attacked by a group of dog and she was not provoking she was mature enough and fit enough she still she got spinal cord injury and she is on verge of losing her job people i i'll take example even my kid got attacked by cord bitten from back and she lost school for so, so many Welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. There's a shocker from Hyderabad where a four-year-old kindergarten student was raped by a man in the Banjara Hills area in a private school. The accused, Rajni Kumar, who's now been arrested, works as a driver for the principal of the victim's school. He was reportedly sexually abusing the victim for the last two months and raped her in the lab located opposite the principal's chamber. With a firm grip on her neck, he also threatened her with dire consequences if she were to reveal the offence to anyone. Meanwhile, school security has been tightened. The school has declared holidays in the wake of this gruesome incident. एलजी डिजिटल क्लास रूम ड्रैवर प्रिंसपल ड्रैवर पिल सैक्सुअल हरासमेंट अक चतल वे चला पाप पेन ए गत टू मंथ बैक इलागे एडी पाप एम चपले भयपड़ी नि आफ्टरनून चपड़ तो मैं बैठक इला प्रिंसपल ने अड़ते प्रिंसपल ड्रैवर अना पिल क्लास रूम के वेलाली Let me bring in my colleague Swastika Das, who's been tracking all these developments for us. Swastika, while action is needed against the driver, I also want to understand what is the kind of action being taken against the school management and authorities, like the principal. It's unimaginable how this incident even happened on school premises. You're absolutely right. In fact, that the school principal has been arrested and booked under relevant section of the POCSO Act. She has been booked for negligence. She has been booked for shielding the driver who has been her consort for the last 11 years. Moreover, the driver, a future. Uh, was also working as an administrative uh, personality in the school at, uh, premises despite having been not put on any official role that's the reason why he had access to the classroom that is where he would barge into these uh, classrooms we are talking about lkg classrooms remember uh, and isolate the kids and then uh, carry out the monstrosity for which he has been arrested in fact the whole argument put forth 
by the school administration is that they do background and safety check but clearly that has not been done because this driver uh, identified as a sexual predator uh, was on the loose and he was uh, being allowed to lurk in the campus without proper vigilance uh, with, uh, for the past two months now very very unfortunate there's really hoping that some strict action is taken and there is a lesson that is to be learned out of this incident swastika thanks a lot for getting us all those details unfortunately the case that we just spoke to you about from hyderabad isn't the only one a 36 year old woman was reportedly abducted by five men and raped in uttar pradesh's ghaziabad for two days the victim has gone on to say that she was assaulted by two people that she knew The Delhi Commission for Women or the DCW has now taken cognizance of the incident. They've also sought a report. As per the SP of Ghaziabad, the victim was found lying on the ground near Ashram Road in a sack with her hands tied. The police also say that there is an angle of property dispute in this case. The victim was then taken to the hospital. As of now, her condition is stable with no internal injuries found yet. She is under observation and as of now, four people have been arrested. मेरी बहन मेरे जन्मदिन पर आई थी और वहाँ से खाना पीना खा के वो नौ बजे करीब चली गई थी ठीक है जी हमने उसे छोड़ा था आसम रोड पे जी आरोपी पांच बताए जा रहे हैं इसमें जी चार उस टाइम पे थे जो स्कॉर्पियो गाड़ी में आए थे उसे ले गए थे अज्ञात जगह पे जो ले गए हैं जहाँ पे ले गए हैं वहाँ पे एक जना और मिला उसे उन्हें और जो ये दुष्कर्म हुआ उसके साथ कि वो पहले एम एम लेके आए थे गाजियाबाद फिर यहाँ से रेफर हो गया जीटीवी के लिए जीटीवी में उसका इलाज चल रहा है हाँ जी बता रहे कि आरोपी पकड़े गए Another case of brutality has rocked the national capital yet again. A body of a 35-year-old woman was found lying in the road in Ghaziabad near the national capital region. According to the police, the incident happened on the night of 17th of September. Five people tried gang raping a woman, and she was then thrown on side of the road. The police got the initial information, and when they reached the spot, they found her lying. By, by the side of the road and they took the her to the nearest hospital which was gtb nagar hospital where we are standing right now according to the hospital when she was brought she was in conscious state and yes foreign objects were found in her private part foreign objects have now been given to the investigating officer to investigate the case further however according to the delhi commission of women a rod was inserted in her private part after which she was left unconscious the police in this entire investigation has taken the the lead they are saying that this was a case of personal enmity and the accused in this entire case are actually known to the victim we'll keep tracking all these uh, developments for now we're slipping into a very short break citizens we have to be more responsible uh, in our action plan to how do we actually deal this menace because uh, there are uh, uh court rules and there is a society and there are animals so we need to find a midway where adjustments can be made and everybody can live in peace and harmony okay i want to ask gauri molaki as per the animal birth control uh, rules that were uh, drafted by the uh, center a few years ago uh, it contravenes all state and municipal acts which mandate the removal of straying animals from streets and public places both for the protection of people as well as animals india has the highest number of rabies cases in the world around 33% of all rabies cases in the world happen in india followed by congo according to a conservative who estimate there are about 20000 annual rabies deaths in india is it time gauri moliki that we come together sit down on the table and address this as a a real problem particularly in our urban centers why should 20000 people die in our country because of rabies in this day and age yeah you're absolutely right these are unnecessary deaths which can be prevented and a regime had been brought in recommended by the world health organization which was adopted as a set of rules uh, in india not just a few years ago but 22 years ago the statutory responsibility of local authorities is to run a robust animal birth control program uh, if we just look at this incident that has happened in noida very dispassionately and just to diagnose where and who went wrong i'd say squarely it is 
is the fault of the Noida authority. For the past three, four years, we've been telling uh, them that the program is riddled with corruption and uh, hardly any um, sterilization is happening and a lot of relocation is happening. People want dogs out of their societies. They are picked up and uh, uh, thrown somewhere else in some other locality where they fight for territory and aggression ag gets aggravated. Uh, this is a result of exactly that. It was a ticking time bomb. Very unfortunate and avoidable situation only if we learn to mend our ways now and uh, run a proper robust scientific animal birth control program and not probably go back to the municipal corporation law era of the uh, of the british when indians and dogs and whatever were not allowed in certain areas and okay. that did not solve us, solve the problem i mean during the um, municipal corporation laws when they were enforced, did that solve the problem of dogs? No, it did not. Um, for centuries, it did not, which is why for developing countries that have an urban solid waste problem, uh, there are scavenging animals and to get rid of them, one has to apply science. You cannot have an eye for an eye and let's kill all the dogs right now or get let's remove them and put them in some shelters. It's not, it's not going to be scientific. Moreover, the rules provide that if a dog is aggressive, then in the animal birth control center it can be put under observation which um, uh, you know where, where it can either die of rabies or if it mends its ways but but it Malaki, why then place. why then is is in a country like uh, ours the estimate of the number of dogs that have been uh, sterilized is less than 10 percent out of a possible 60 million dogs across the country uh, less than 6 million have been sterilized surely then yeah, you, would, you would agree that there is a problem of non-sterilized dogs and particularly in urban centers like Delhi NCR or you saw what happened in Kerala a few months ago. If you have a large number of non-sterilized dogs out there, uh, surely it's an invitation to kill. Zero resources by the center towards the animal birth control program. Municipal corporation not even understanding their duty, let alone trying to implement it properly and state governments not monitoring the animal birth control program as has been directed by the Honorable Supreme Court. These are the gaps. Okay. If only uh, I've got a bunch of callers. Resources. I want to go to them first uh, and then I'll go across back to the rest of our guests. Uh, Mr. Kulamani Mishra is calling us from Bhubaneswar. Uh, Mr. Mishra, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Go ahead with your question, yes. Hello. Yes, go ahead with your question. I can hear uh, you. Actually, actually, this dog manner is very distressing. And uh, in our colony also, it is a colony of 210 families. Uh -huh. The pet dog kept by the owners or tenants is also highly distressing and disturbing. When we are going inside the lift, one dog is coming from top floor. And it, it, it uh, harms the uh, new entrant in, inside the lift. So this has to be stopped. The new rules to be framed by okay. a dog. Dog time should be uh, fixed, but from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., dogs can be allowed in the, inside the list. Other times, dogs should not be allowed inside the list. All right, the let me also go across to our next caller. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mishra. Vimla is calling us from Pune. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, just about the stray dogs, it has become a nuisance, or actually. In each and every corner of the road, many minimum seven dogs will be waiting there. What happened that's in Gribu did happen. Right, the that's High that's Court right, in right. Uh, Kolkata has, of course, lambasted your government and the police this, over the post-war violence. We are not making this up. Even in Valbiki Ramayana, it is written that Ravan was Sarvaguna Sampan. Hmm. Despite all the knowledge, all the ability that he had, he had no control over his Indriyas. And that's what the Indriyas finally consumed him. Correct. He and wanted something, yeah. he wanted it. Correct. He didn't think about, yaar, ye dharm hai ke adharm. You can't annex Ukrainian sovereign territory in a referendum and then bomb missiles across 12 cities, kill about a dozen civilians and then say, come and talk to us. Here is someone who is on a mission. Here is someone who has vision. And his scope and idea in terms of uh, the small towns of India's to be uh, is very different from what we have seen by leaders in the past.
frequently threatened residents and therefore RWAs do not want to come in the way because they are often threatened with an FIR for criminal intimidation. Is it time that these yeah. rules are changed, Dhankar Pandey? Yeah, right. And, and I, I'll talk about a uh, more comprehensive way because everyone is talking about problem, right? Nobody is talking about impact. I'll cite some examples. Mm -hmm. There were some dogs in nearby society. I'll name it in fusion uh, some time ago. And by the time authority catches it, it took toll of at least eight residents. Recently, one lady was attacked by a group of dogs and she was not provoking. She was mature enough and fit enough. She still she got spinal cord injury and she is on verge of losing her job. People, I, I'll take example, even my kid got attacked by cord, bitten from back, and she lost school for so, so many days. We are not talking about impacts. See, strays are not here to stay in your home, right? There, there are certain other spaces for them. We, we, are, uh, all, we all are saying that dogs and uh, men can go together. We are talking about dogs' rights. We are not talking about men's rights, human rights, right? Okay. In, in society, if you are going to parking, a group of dogs starts barking and charging towards you. How, how much capable you are to fight all those, if you, those attacks together, right? So all the animal lovers should understand that. We also are animal lovers. We are not against. But then there should be rules same and not only framed. There are so much rules by authorities, by Supreme Court, by government. But how many are being implemented on ground? No, in no, fact, nothing, some, right? some are it's arguing that uh, the rules are also coming in the way. The rules are also a problem uh, as indeed uh, uh, judgments laid out by the Delhi High Court and the Supreme Court. Let me ask uh, Shahzada Sodhi this. Uh, in fact, earlier this year, in May of 2022, the Supreme Court, a three-judge bench, had vacated a stay on a Delhi High Court order which said that stray dogs have a right to food and water and citizens have the right to feed them, which basically means it paves the way for community dogs to be fed either at private driveways or porches or spots that are designated in consultation with RWAs, which means it is incumbent on the local police to ensure that no caregiver or community <coughs> dog feeder is harassed. Now, if these are the rules, if these are the judgments of the court, then surely, uh, like I said, it's an invitation for, uh, for these strays to kill. Uh, first of all, it's very unfortunate that has happened in Noida. And the so second thing is, as a, an animal lover, as as in feeder, I feed dogs every day. And I'm also harassed every day by the public and the people where I go and feed. But over the years, I have um, understood that I have to make the changes. How can I feed the animals? And I'm not against the people as well. So I've chosen times that where or chosen times and places where animals can be fed in a separate area or closer to the grounds or closer to the main road. So they are so it doesn't get into the way of the people that are staying there. But if you if you say that you cannot have dogs in the public places, then where will they go? It has to be you have to make animal feeders the stakeholders in all these things. But we are too much, we are harassed in a lot of ways. It's only when it goes beyond a point that we go and file an FIR or we ask our people to come with us and to help us out. But it's very rare. It's more of the time 10 after 9 out of 10 people are harassing animal feeders to be genuine. No, but Mr. Sodhi, can, uh, I mean, can, can, what, what will you say to the family uh, uh, that lost the 7 month old child today? I mean, you're saying, you're saying that, you know, uh, dogs have to have uh, rights to public places just like humans do. But what about, yeah. what, about, what about modern cities across the world? You don't see stray dogs in New York or in London. But Obviously, is somebody is taking care of these strays. It's not like there are no strays in those cities. The point see, is, are we going to develop those facilities for strays in, in our country? Or are we just going to say they have as much right to public places as we do? No, I'm not saying it's very sad that the family has lost a child. I'm not saying that it, 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 it happened, it shouldn't have happened. But in India, it's not New York or London. No, we should first Welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. In the wake of uh, these targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, my colleague Anand Narsman spoke to JNK LG Manoj Sinha on the security situation amid the normalcy drive. Sinha also highlighted 
The preparations for elections in Jammu and Kashmir, which could take place next year. I'm leaving you with this conversation. Thanks a lot for watching. Namaste. Call it fate, call it coincidence, or just how it is supposed to be. But every time we want to listen to the Honorable LG, Sri Manoj Sinha, somehow I find, himself, find myself in front of him and he is kind enough to give us the time. From the time he has taken charge uh, as the Honorable LG of Jammu and Kashmir, there has been an unwritten exchange between us that every three to six months we will meet to understand and get a check of how things are progressing in Jammu and Kashmir. So Manoj Sinha ji, that prakaran abhi chal raha hai, to aapka bahut bahut dhanyavad. Abhar aapka okay. bahut bahut. अब जब हम बात कर रहे हैं तो ऐसे समय पे बात कर रहे हैं कि दीपावली को कुछ ही दिन बचे हैं लेकिन एक अलग तरीके का माहौल बनाने की कोशिश फिर से यहां शुरू हो चुकी है कवायद शुरू हो चुकी है जहां खासकर जो देश के अन्य इलाकों से आए हैं और यहां पर जो स्थानीय कश्मीरी हिंदू हैं कश्मीरी पंडित हैं उन पर अटैक करने की कोशिश की जा रही है वहीं से शुरू करते हैं आप कैसे देखते हैं इसको आपने इस पर बयान दिया है पर कुछ लोग इस पर और कुछ कहने की बात कर रहे हैं तो मैं आपसे वही पूछना चाहूंगा वास्तव में यह एक दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण घटना है और मैं इसको धर्म के नजरिए से नहीं देखता क्योंकि अगर पीछे के आंकड़ों में आप जाएंगे यह सच है कि टारगेटेड किलिंग्स हुई हैं कश्मीरी पंडितों की कुछ हिंदुओं की लेकिन कई मुसलमान भी मारे गए आतंकवाद का कोई धर्म नहीं होता है और कल एक कार्यक्रम में मैंने एक बात कही थी मुझे लगता है कि आपके बीच मुझे दोहराना बड़ा जरूरी है उस बात को तालिबान का एक कमांडर था और बड़ा कुख्यात था हत्या करने में उसको कोई संकोच नहीं होता था कहीं भी करता था मंदिर में मस्जिद में मातम में भी वो हत्या कर देता था अस्पताल में स्कूल में उससे किसी ने पूछा कि ये तुम विवेकहीन हत्या करते हो क्या तुम्हें ये नहीं लगता कि तुम्हारे बारे में पब्लिक ओपिनियन बड़ी खराब हो रही होगी उसने जो जवाब दिया उसने कहा कि देखिए हम सड़क नहीं बना सकते हम स्कूल नहीं बना सकते हम अस्पताल नहीं बना सकते हम लोगों में सेंस ऑफ सिक्योरिटी पैदा कर सकते और वो हमारी पद्धति यह है कि पहले सेंस ऑफ इनसिक्योरिटी पैदा करना ताकि लोगों को यह लग जाए कि जब तक तालिबान का शासन नहीं होगा सुरक्षित नहीं है यहां भी कुछ लोग लंबे समय से इसी कोशिश में लगे हैं कि भारत सरकार जितना कर ले जम्मू कश्मीर प्रशासन जितना कर ले जब तक कश्मीर हमारे साथ नहीं मिलेगा तब तक अमन चैन नहीं आएगा ये बेसिक थियोरी मुझे लगता है देश को और कम से कम यहां के लोगों को समझना बड़ा जरूरी है एक भट्ट साहब की हत्या हुई उत्तर प्रदेश के दो हमारे मजदूर भाई मारे गए मैं मानता हूं कि मौत का कोई मुआवजा नहीं होता है प्रशासनिक तौर पर जो भी उनके परिवारों की देखभाल करनी है वो हम करेंगे लेकिन ये सच है कि पहले की तुलना में अगर देखेंगे आप तो सिक्योरिटी सिनेरियो काफी बेहतर हुआ है लोगों की अपेक्षाएं हमसे बढ़ गई जी अगर पहले का मानक होता जब 36 लोग एक दिन मार दिए जाते थे उसकी कोई चर्चा नहीं होती थी वे लोग भी आज सवाल पूछ रहे हैं अब देश की और सामान्य आदमी की जम्मू कश्मीर में हमसे अपेक्षा है कि एक भी घटना नहीं होनी चाहिए होनी चाहिए देश के प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी हैं ये कैसे हो सकता है कुछ लोग अनावश्यक रूप से ये सवाल उठाते हैं कि 370 और पैंतीस से जब खत्म हुआ था तो ये आश्वासन दिया गया था कि आतंकवाद समाप्त हो जाएगा मैं अगर आपसे जिम्मेदारी से बात कहना चाहता हूं कि 5 अगस्त 2019 को 370 समाप्त हुई उसके तीन साल पहले और 5 अगस्त 2019 के बाद के तीन साल के आंकड़ों को आप देखेंगे तो इनोसेंट किलिंग्स या नागरिकों की हत्या में लगभग आधी गिरावट आई है और मैं बार बार एक बात कहता हूं कि शांति खरीदने में हमारा विश्वास नहीं शांति स्थापित करने में विश्वास है वही अगला प्रश्न आता है कि डिलिमिटेशन की प्रक्रिया हो गई नेता कह रहे हैं चुनाव कब कराएंगे 
मीडिया पूछ रही है चुनाव कब कराएंगे मैं आपसे ये पूछ रहा हूं कि जनता क्या चाहती है जनता एक सेंट्रली एडमिनिस्टर्ड जम्मू एंड कश्मीर थोड़े टाइम के लिए चाहती है या जनता भी चाहती है कि फिर से नेता आ जाए और कंट्रोल एक इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव के पास चला जाए इस एक प्रश्न में कई सवाल आपने जी जी एक एक करके मैं बताता हूं डिलिमिटेशन की प्रक्रिया पूरी हो गई डिलिमिटेशन कमीशन के जो नॉर्म्स हैं मैंने बहुत बारीकी से अध्ययन किया है लंबे समय बाद मुझे लगता है कि जम्मू कश्मीर में नॉर्म्स के आधार पर डिलिमिटेशन हुआ है चुनाव कब होंगे संसद में यह बात देश के गृहमंत्री जी ने कई बार कही कि डिलिमिटेशन फर्स्ट देन इलेक्शन देन स्टेट हुड दैट अप्रोप्रिएट टाइम टाइम तो अब इलेक्शन का टाइम आ गया है अब काफी पुरानी वोटर लिस्ट है मतदाता सूची जी तो जब भी कोई नया चुनाव होता है तो मुझे लगता है कि नए मतदाताओं का इनरोलमेंट आवश्यक होता है वो काम चल रहा है नवंबर तक चुनाव आयोग ने वो समय दिया हुआ है तो एक बार मुझे लगता है कि मतदाताओं के पुनरीक्षण का उनके नामांकन इनरोलमेंट का काम खत्म हो जाए चुनाव कब होंगे ये तारीख चुनाव आयोग तय करती है जो एक भारत में संवैधानिक संस्था है और अब तक बहुत बेहतर काम किया है हमारे चुनाव आयोग ने प्रशासनिक तौर पर जब हमसे सलाह मांगी जाएगी जरूर हम सलाह देंगे और कानून व्यवस्था या सुरक्षा की स्थिति की दृष्टि से यहां चुनाव आयोग जब भी निर्देश देगा हम चुनाव कराने के लिए पूरी तरह तैयार हैं कुछ लोगों को जान करके अगर ना समझ बन रहे हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि उनको समझाया नहीं जा सकता है किसी की आंख है नहीं देख रहा है तो उसको कैसे दिखाएंगे अगर किसी को नहीं दिखाई पड़ा है तो उसको चश्मा लगा सकते हैं कुछ लोग हैं जो इस तरह की बात करते हैं तीसरी बात जनता क्या चाहती मुझे लगता है कि मेरा हक नहीं है कि जनता क्या चाहती इस विषय पर मैं राय मैं राय रखूं लेकिन आपसे मैं एक अनुरोध जरूर करूंगा कि आप आए हैं तो जरा जनता से बात करिए और जनता की क्या राह है देश को जरूर बताइए Good evening. Ten years after the brutal rape and murder of Nirbhaya, two shocking cases have come to light. In Hyderabad, a four-year-old girl child was raped, and that too by the driver of her school principal. Both the driver and the principal have been arrested. Here in the Delhi NCR region, a 40-year-old woman was gang raped by five men. The message is simple: whether you're four or whether you're 40, if you're a woman in this country, there is no guarantee of your safety. What has changed in the 10 years since Nirbhaya? But first, let's play out the story of what happened in Hyderabad as well as what happened here in the National Capital Region, and then we'll go across to our guests. Furious parents thrashing a man accused of raping their four-year-old daughter. <laughs> The accused, who was the driver of the kindergarten principal, had been allegedly sexually assaulting the child for the last two months in Hyderabad's upscale Banjara Hills. The matter came to the fore after the girl's parents noticed a change in her behaviour. She was unusually quiet, appeared depressed, and was often found crying. Finally, she admitted to her mother about the assault. She was allegedly raped in a lab opposite the principal's office. When she went to school with her parents, she pointed towards the driver. The parents then filed a complaint and the driver was arrested. The accused Rajni Kumar used to do odd jobs at the school like maintaining the labs and running errands for the staff. According to the police, that's how he came in contact with the victim. Police are now verifying if he harassed or abused other students. Outraged parents Throng the school premises to protest, prompting the school administration to declare holiday. As if the Hyderabad case is not spine-chilling enough, a 36-year-old woman from Delhi was allegedly gang-raped and tortured by a group of men in Uttar Pradesh's Ghaziabad, and then left on the roadside. 
इतना घिनौना केस है ये केस बिल्कुल निर्भया जैसा केस है और इस केस में तो कम से कम मेरी सिस्टम से अपील है कि तुरंत फास्ट ट्रैक कराया जाए और तुरंत इन आदमियों को सख्त से सख्त सजा दी जाए It's been nearly 10 years since the Nirbhaya case shook the nation's conscience. But has anything changed on the ground in India? Is it still no country for women? All right, has anything changed in the 10 years since Nirbhaya? Let me now go across to our guests who are joining us. Binay Kumar Singh is an author and columnist. Bachu Srinivas uh, of the TRS party will be joining us. Yogita Bayana is a women's rights activist. And Nirmal Kaur is a former IPS officer. Uh, Nirmal Kaur, let me start with you first, ma'am. As a former IPS officer and as a woman, Uh, these are the statistics from the NCRB. In 2011-12, the number of rapes in India was 24,270. In 2021, it's jumped to 31,677. A 30% rise in the number of ra- rape cases in India over the last 10 years. Now, normally, whether it is cops or politicians, they will say, "Oh, that's because the reporting has gone up. A uh, number of women who are coming forth to report these cases has gone up." But surely, there can't be a 30% rise in heinous crimes against women. over the last 10 years that prompts us to ask the question what has changed in the aftermath of nirbhaya what what has changed in the last 10 years i think it is the women security issues though after nirbhaya people have become very conscious and society is doing trying to do its best the police the civil society everyone together but still i think the issue of women security is 